Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is Glencore PLC daily chart overlaid with the Dow. You can see we've got a rally now in the Dow up above 17,000. We have what some might call a dead cat bounce in Glencore. I don't know. We'll see. You can see they got down to 67, ran all the way to 140. So a quick 100% gain in the price of the stock. But you can see that it corresponds nearly identically with the move up in the overall stock market. So it appears that they're not really willing to let this thing go at this point. We know the latest Jim Willie, his, he's saying that the, the collapse is delayed by one year. That doesn't surprise me. Um, they usually don't let things go. The pattern for the last two or three cycles has been they don't let things go until the end of the presidency. And we've had eight-year presidencies. We had Clinton, Bush, and now we have Obama. If you remember, at the end of Clinton's presidency, they let the dot-com thing collapse. At the end of Bush's presidency, they let the financial crisis uh, spin out of control. And probably at the end of Obama's presidency, they're going to let this, this one collapse. But it's too close to still being in his presidency, and that means he'll get the blame. So they're probably not gonna do that. So what they are doing is covering things up, kicking the can down the road. Now we know with the Congress, with what's going on with the Congress, it's really a crazy situation. No, This McCarthy character backed out uh, from being Speaker of the House. Paul Ryan says he doesn't want the job, and we know Boehner's leaving. So. We're in this bizarre situation where nobody really wants to take leadership. No, nobody wants to be the captain of the Titanic, basically. They all know it's going down. and They don't want it to be on their watch. And I think they believe the watch is getting closer and closer. So we're going to look at an article tonight from Jim Quinn. This is about the hidden depression. Basically, we're in a depression right now, even though it's hidden and they use financial and accounting shenanigans to hide the truth. And of course, they prop up paper financial markets to try to um, make it seem healthy, even though the only thing that's healthy is the accounts of billionaires and, and uh, the ultra rich. But before we look at Jim Quinn, I wanted to take you over to the national debt clock. Now this debt clock debate you can see here that the U.S. national debt is coming in at $18.4 I don't know where they're getting that number because it's been frozen at eighteen one fifty two, as I point out many times since March. And they're currently taking the federal pension money. You can see here largest budget items. You've got $252 billion a year is spent on federal pensions. So it's not surprising that... They take that money first. Those are going to be the most politically motivated people. So by threatening their money, and of course, Social Security, you can see, uh, look at these numbers here. Social Security is $800 billion, $900 billion. Medicaid is almost a trillion. Income Security, uh, it's just crazy. Of course, the interest is really low because they've rigged the interest rates. Interestingly, there was an article today on Zero Hedge about the interest rate in Brazil, which I think is anywhere from 6 to 12%. Can you imagine if we had that kind of an interest rate here? What would this net interest on debt be? But let's go over and look at the population picture here of what things are like in the United States. I frequently use the analogy of how many people are in the cart, riding in the cart, and how many people are pulling the cart. And as I pointed out many times, the number of people pulling the cart is getting less and less, and the number of people riding in the cart is becoming more and more. So you can see here the U.S. population is 321 million people. Now here's a startling figure for you. Total receiving benefits. That's right, 160. So exactly 50% of the US population is receiving benefits from the government. How does that even work? You've got 
57 million Medicare enrollees. You've got 77 million Medicaid beneficiaries, 45 million food stamp recipients. Uh, you've got 23 million government employees. And we're going to look at the employment picture when we look at the uh, Jim Quinn article. So private sector employees, this is going to be the people pulling the cart. But I think if we break down this figure and Jim starts to do it a little bit of what I will call unproductive jobs or people who really aren't producing any wealth, uh, he singles out HES sector, but there's actually a lot of other sectors. I would guess that the actual number of productive people in here is probably half this figure. And if that's the case, you've got 50 million people paying for 321 million people. So we're looking at a catastrophic collapse whenever it does come. But of course, everybody is invested in kicking the can down the road and keeping this thing completely falling apart on their watch. So this is the article I was talking about. This is uh, pretty much documents the fact that we have a depression, but it's being hidden. And again, this is... Uh, Jim Quinn of The Burning Platform. Everyone has seen the pictures of the unemployed waiting in soup lines during the Great Depression. When you try to tell a propaganda-believing, willfully ignorant, mainstream, media-watching, math-challenged consumer, we are in the midst of a greater depression, they act as if you've lost your mind. They will immediately bluster about the 5.1% unemployment rate, record corporate profits, and stock market near all-time highs. The cognitive dissonance of these people is only exceeded by their inability to understand basic mathematical concepts. The reason you don't see huge lines of people waiting in soup lines during this greater depression is because the government has figured out how to disguise suffering through modern technology. During the height of the Great Depression in 1933, there were 12.8 million Americans unemployed. These were the men pictured in the soup lines. Today, there are 46 million Americans in an electronic soup kitchen line as their food is distributed through EBT cards with that angel of mercy, J.P. Morgan, reaping billions in profits by processing the transactions. So here's the chart here. Now, you can see Obama was elected here 2008, and things have gone downhill from there. So there has not been a recovery during his uh, presidential uh, time. If you look at Clinton, you can see that these numbers actually fell during the Clinton administration. But you can see that during the Bush administration, there really was just one little drop here. You can see that the last year, uh, the next to the last year there, 2007, a little bit of a drop, and then boom, it took off. Uh, will it take off again when Obama's presidency is nearing an end? I think it's going to. These 46 million people represent 14% of the U.S. population. There are 23 million households on food stamps in a nation of 123 million households. Therefore, 19% of all households in the U.S. are so poor they require food assistance to survive. In 1933, there were approximately 126 million Americans living in 30 million households. The government didn't keep official unemployment records until 1940, but the Department of Labor estimated 12.8 million people were unemployed during the worst year of the Great Depression, or 24.9% of the labor force. By 1937, it had fallen to 14%, or approximately 8 million people. Now think about that. We talk about the Great Depression and how terrible and what a long period of time that that was. Well, it pretty much began with the 1929 stock market crash, but then uh, it rallied from there and really didn't start going down hard until 1930. So the years from 1930 to 1937, that was the, the height of the Great Depression, about a seven-year period. Now think about this. We've already been in this hidden depression for the same length of time but nothing has really recovered. That's really frightening if you think about the fact that this already, in some ways, is a longer and more serious depression than the last one, but I don't think we've even started the real downhill slope yet. 
We are now supposedly five years into an economic recovery. The unemployment rate, according to the government, has fallen from 10 to 5 percent, maybe a comparison to the Great Depression in 1937, five years after the worst of it would reveal some truth. It's not easy to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison because very few women worked outside the home in 1937, and the average life expectancy in the 1930s was 60 years old. Today, the majority of women are theoretically in the workforce, and the average life expectancy is 78 years old. In 1937, only 5% of the population was over 65 years old versus 13% today. There were approximately 55 million Americans in the labor force in 1937, according to the DOL, and approximately 47 million of them were employed, so 85% of the eligible workforce was working. There was no BLS to massage, manipulate, seasonally adjust, or fake the data to make things appear better than they were in 1937. We'll skip the Edward Benet stuff. These facts reveal the utter falsity of the propaganda-drenched, duplicitous data dumped by the BLS on behalf of vested interests who have captured our government and have an agenda requiring the public to be kept in the dark regarding their own dire financial situation. No matter how you slice the data, it reveals an absolute parallel to the situation during the Great Depression. There are 251 million Americans of working age and only 149 million are employed of which 20 million are part-time and 8 million are self-employed, only 59% of working age Americans actually work. The BLS has the cojones to declare that only 157 million of the 251 million working age Americans are actually in the labor force. This outrageous assumption flies in the face of all reasonableness, facts, and truth. In 1937, even with women not working outside the home and very few people living past 65, the participation rate was 75%. Today, with the majority of women capable and willing to work and older Americans working well into their 60s, the BLS actually expects a critical thinking person to believe the participation rate is only 62.4%, the lowest since 1977. It's a pure and simple despicable lie. The true participation rate should exceed the rate in 1937 based on the facts. Using the 75% participation rate today yields a true unemployment rate of 21%, not the preposterous 5.1% shoveled by the BS artists at the BLS. The 21% rate ties very closely to the figures arrived at by John Williams of Shadow Stats. An unbiased assessment of the facts reveals unemployment numbers and people on government assistance numbers that match or exceed those of the Great Depression. So here's the chart. This is the unemployment rate, and it gives you the official rate, the U3, and that's the one they always report, and the broad U6, which is this gray one in the middle, and then there's the shadow stats unemployment rate. Now even based upon these uh, official rates, you can see that on the edge of the next recession, we've barely gotten back to the, the last top there. So where is it going to go? Uh, and if the John Williams number is correct, it's going to be absolutely frightening. We've already seen what's happened in Europe where they have in some countries as high as 75 percent youth unemployment. I also wonder whether the corporate mainstream media purposely chooses not to show pictures of the poor waiting in long lines to be fed because their function is not to report facts and truth, but to perpetuate the lie that all is well in America. I passed the Grace Lutheran Church at 36th and Haverford Avenue in West Philly every day on my way to work. Every Thursday is when the church, in partnership with the Phil Abundance Food Bank, distributes free food to the people of West Philly. The line stretches around the block at 7.30 a.m., waiting, awaiting the filibundance truck to arrive. There are old, young, black, white, Latino, and Asians in line. It looks exactly like the line pictured in the Great Depression above. I'm sure there are similar scenes across every city in America on a daily basis. People dependent on food banks and living in homeless shelters are at record levels. Where are the mainstream media pictures? How does that jive with Ben Bernanke's self-congratulatory book tour about he saved America by secretly handing Wall Street and foreign bankers $16 trillion? 
For the average American family, the U.S. economy has been in recession since 2000, with the Greater Depression arriving in 2008. The working age population has grown by 40 million since 2000, with only 12 million jobs added over that time frame. Of those, 10 million were in the government-controlled health, education, and social services sectors, with millions of good-paying manufacturing jobs destroyed, replaced by a couple million low-paying service jobs. As David Stockman points out, Bernanke and the vested interest he serves continue to spew disingenuous propaganda to cover up the fact average American households continue to experience depression-like conditions. When your real household income is lower than it was in 1989, while your basic living costs for food, energy, transportation, rent, housing, health care, taxes, and education have skyrocketed, you might, you just might be experiencing a depression. Now he points out during the same time, the Fed has grown its balance sheet fivefold or tenfold, nine times from five hundred billion dollars to four point five trillion. And this chart here is the non-farm payrolls less the HES complex. Edward Bernays wrote the book Propaganda in 1928. It was utilized well by Goebbels and Hitler over the next decade or so, but the corporate fascist oligarchy disguised as American democracy puts Goebbels' efforts to shame. Bernays would be thrilled by the efficiency and professionalism with which the invisible deep state governing power is able to utilize mass media, the internet, public schools, and academia to shape, mold, manipulate, and alter the minds of the masses. The unholy alliance between shadowy billionaires, a private bank owned by Wall Street and controlling our currency, the military-industrial complex, the sick care complex, mega corporations peddling consumer goods, and politicians who are easily bought has left a hollowed-out, rotting carcass of a nation. With the peasants experiencing a depression while the lords of the manor feast like there is no tomorrow, but at least the 103 million peasants who aren't working believe only 5.1% of them are unemployed. It's a Bernaysian miracle. So excellent article from Jim Quinn. The numbers really are staggering when you think about it. When you look at the figures, just looking at the largest budget items here, a trillion dollars in Medicare, nearly a trillion dollars in Social Security, $600 $600 billion in defense spending, $300 billion in transfer payments for welfare, $200 billion on the debt, and $250 billion in federal pensions. For all intents and purposes, these are all people living off the government. But the number of people supporting the government is getting smaller and smaller every day. And eventually the cart's just going to stop. And that's why they have to hide the depression. Because uh, if they told the truth, then the whole thing would collapse. And we'll talk to you next time.